Hello, this is Lee Hollins with Cedar Hammock Fire Rescue in Manatee County. We're doing various training minute videos on realistic training props, and I would just like to bring to your attention that these particular scenarios we're doing are not instructional scenarios. This is not for instructional purposes. It's to show how you can use these various props is what it's all about. So we try to be realistic, but we have some brand new recruits that we're using for this particular uh, segment and we have some experienced people also and we have some experienced officers but we don't want anyone to try to pick apart the actual tactics that are used it is just to show how these props can be used in various ways okay so we just want to bring that to your attention thank you Hello, this is Battalion Chief Lee Hollins with Cedar Hammock Fire Rescue. We're at the Emergency Services Training Facility in Mantee County, Florida, and we're going to be looking at various LPG training props that have been constructed. Uh, they've been on site here about 10 years. Just want to note that we're not going to be getting into tactics and strategy of dealing with LPG gas or uh, any low pressure uh, vessels that we have out here. This is just to show the training props and how they can be used in a training situation. I just want to make sure that everyone understands that there's various standards and ordinances and fire marshal rules and regulations that deal with these type of installations. If you're going to construct this type of a uh, training prop, you want to make sure that you follow the NFPA guidelines that will make it as safe as possible. You'd also want to contact your state fire marshal's office and make sure that you're following any of their rules and regulations that deal with this type of a training prop not only in constructing the prop, but in valving and uh, safety issues, trip fall hazards, uh, water supplies, things like this. And then you also want to uh, make sure that you're following any rules and regulations in your jurisdiction or your state dealing with the tactical part of it. When you actually have firefighters and officers out here doing the evolutions, uh, for instance, in Florida, we have the uh, live fire training instructors and we have the live fire training adjunct instructors that uh, are certified by the state of Florida and you need to have a certain number of those people to uh, run an evolution here. So with that said, just want to uh, make sure that everyone's aware of that. We're going to be just lighting these props up and taking a look at the uh, various uh, valving and so forth and a little description of what we have here. We're not going to be getting into the tactics and strategies. So thanks for watching Fire Engineering's Training Minute videos. Okay, with this particular prop, what we have here is uh, simulating an underground gas line that has ignited and this is about as realistic as it gets. The uh, prop that we have here just on the other side there's an underground valve where crews can approach this possibly with a couple of hose lines and an instructor in the middle and they can push this fire away from that valving and go ahead and secure that valve out in the streets of course in uh, real life situations which do occur from time to time underground gas line igniting the gas company will be involved and this may need to be controlled from upstream of course there's always a chance that a gas system may be fed from both ways so you may have a loop system so the gas company may need to control this from valving that's remote. Of course, the key with this is that you don't want to put the fire out because if you put the fire out, you're going to have a tremendous gas leak here to deal with and it's just going to be looking for an ignition source. So uh, this type of a uh, prop would be a uh, situation where you would have to determine all these things beforehand and and uh, there are situations and in the street where such a uh, 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 tank or underground line uh, it, it's safer to have this thing ignited than not ignited so it would be a decision on uh, what would need to happen if this was put out but uh, again this is a realistic prop uh, indicating about 60 pounds of pressure on a one-inch pipe that's ruptured and ignited 
from some type of a ignition source. Okay, this particular prop is a mock-up of a low-pressure horizontal fuel storage tank. The idea here is that uh, there would be fuel underneath the tank on fire, impinging on the tank, and uh, that there would be some type of a uh, vent out the top that would also ignite as that oil or diesel or whatever type of uh, combustible material is in that tank as that heats up and uh, starts vaporizing. So what this prop would do would be simulate that situation and normally we would have crews come in and they would try to sweep the fire out from underneath this particular prop. As you can see it's not right on the ground but it's, uh, it's, it's a pretty good uh, prop that, that simulates that and there's some valving underneath that they could go for which isn't real realistic so it's basically to sweep that fire out from underneath that tank or we also use this uh, as a uh, defensive position where we would set up a master stream uh, that would be flowing at least 600 gallons a minute onto this tank to keep this tank cool until that fuel underneath the tank burned off so there are several different scenarios you can do with this Another scenario with this prop is uh, you can use it without fire. Uh, you can fill it with uh, water, simulate any type of a hazardous material spill. On the other end of this tank, there's a placard that you can put the different uh, placards for combustible liquid, flammable liquid, corrosive liquid, so forth. So it's a, it's a prop that can be used in, in various fashions, but the main reason for this prop is to uh, simulate a fuel fire underneath this tank where crews have to sweep that out of the way so that it's not impinging on this tank. So this is a low pressure fuel storage tank prop. Okay, this particular prop we have is a residential gas meter. Uh, this would typically be natural gas. And as you see, we have a ruptured line here that has ignited. And in this particular scenario, we could do a couple things here. We could uh, see if there's a, a valve that we can get to, uh, protect the firefighters with a hose stream, which there is in this case, just to the right of that meter where, it, where that uh, riser comes up into the meter. There's a valve there. However, as we indicated earlier, looking at the underground gas line, the key is you do not want to extinguish the fire in case you can't control the gas. So uh, if, if, if that wasn't an option, then we would, uh, of course, protect exposures, and we wait for the gas company to shut this flow off remotely, which, of course, uh, we all know that this would be a problem if that meter's up against a commercial or a residential occupancy. That fire is most likely going to be uh, blowing up into the soffit or whatever, and you're going to have some problems here. So. If you can get to that valve and secure that valve, that certainly would be the number one priority. So this is the residential gas meter, which of course uh, a, a commercial gas meter would just be a larger fire and a larger meter, larger piping. But same uh, problems that you would have tactically and strategically. Okay, this high pressure LPG tank prop, again very realistic. What this is simulating is that the cluster valve at the top has had some type of a rupture and it found an ignition source. This particular one, of course, is venting straight up, which is good. And uh, probably tactically, as long as it's looking the way it's looking right there, this would be a situation where we'd probably cool that tank with some lines and uh, let this fuel burn itself out. What you would have with this situation if the fire was impinging on the tank would be to have a relief valve firing off and we'll show that next along with the cluster valve. These uh, fires uh, from my experiences typically happen when someone's filling a forklift and drives off with the hose attached or something in that nature. You may have two or three of these tanks side by side where one might be impinging on the other. But uh, this is your cluster valve on top of a high pressure LPG tank. Okay, well the only difference here you can see is that the relief valve has fired off 
This relief valve uh, in real life wouldn't be uh, sticking out of the tank like that. It would be down on that tank in that cluster area. And this particular situation would be, uh, you would just be cooling that tank and trying to get the temperature of that tank lowered down so that pressure relief valve resets and stops flowing the gas out of it. Also realistic, and you could probably hear the whistling sound of that relief valve. I have personally been on fires very similar to this that uh, it actually sounded like a jet engine. And it was very loud, there was uh, no mistaking it. And this is just something that uh, would, would need to have that tank cooled down so that that valve would reset itself and probably be a burn off at that point. I've been on these situations also where crews had to go in and ignite the flame again where they were extinguished by accident with the hose line due to the location and the wind direction back in an industrial plant. So uh, very realistic prop. One thing to consider with all these LPG props and in real life, in the daytime with the sun out, bright day, you're not going to see these flames like this. Those flames are going to be almost invisible. So uh, that needs to be uh, taken into consideration when you're responding to any type of a gas leak that uh, it may be ignited and you're not, just, you're not seeing the flames, you'll see the, uh, the heat coming off, the heat vapors, but uh, something to consider out in the streets. This is Lee Hollins. Thanks for watching Training Minute videos by Fire Engineering Magazine.